Welcome back to another edition of Bourbon Kingdom. I'm David. And I'm Zach. And today we uh, are going to do something a little bit different, and we're going to talk about hunting tips. Yeah, basically this is, I mean, let's face it, we're all here at this channel not to talk about cars or how to build a house. We're here basically how to evaluate, and taste, and try, and mostly find good bourbon. Find good bourbon. So, yeah, try to find at least Try to bourbon. find it, yeah. So, talking about finding good bourbon, we need it. We need a bourbon, like we literally right, yeah. don't have one. All right, so. you you pick. I think last time I picked. So, uh, yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna talk through uh, four or five things that I think are important when thinking about hunting for bourbon because it's it is a hunt. It's not always a find. It is always a hunt, though. Yeah, so. yeah. That we'll get to that point later. By the way, O'Carter, Carter single barrel sixteen. Um, yeah. Don't Delish. mind if I do. Delish. So let's start off with the, I think, the most important tip when it comes to hunting bourbon. And it's the one that sometimes people don't like, but it comes back to relationships. And whenever we're talking about relationships, we're talking about with like store owners. Yeah, I have no clue said that. Store owners, store employees. Um, you know, heck, I know people who have great relationships with reps. Yeah. And who are able to talk to them and know when the releases are coming out. Um, you know, for me, I, I don't just shop at one store, um, whenever it comes to, you know, bourbon and stuff, cause each store is a little different. The big box stores are obviously going to get different stuff yeah. than, than the mom and pop stores and mom and pop stores you would think wouldn't get as much. Um, but you know, some mom and pop stores are owned by, you know, multiple or not multiple people, but multiple people own small, you know, little liquor stores so they can spread out their allocation. Um, but I probably shop at, I shop at two over here in Indiana, in Southern Indiana, and yeah. then there's like another three or four ish that I'll shop over in Kentucky. And every time I shop over there, if I'm not buying a bottle, I don't buy a bottle every single time I go in there, but I always sit there and talk to everybody, yeah. you know, my friends who work there or, you know, the, the owner or the manager or yeah. whoever it is. Sometimes I might have a pour there, I might have a drink there. I'm always kind of in there, and I always want to support their business at the same time. Yeah. So even if I'm just buying a water from them, like just doing that. Just buy stuff. something. Yeah. Always just buy something, no yeah. matter what it is, and talk. Don't be afraid to talk because relationship, that's all it is, is two people talking. So, like, you you make it happen, and, you know, it may not pay off right away, but it may pay off, you know, six months down the road, a year down the road, whatever oh. it takes. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. And it's not... Don't go in there. I think one of the biggest mistakes I see people do, like, they'll talk to them, and they'll be really nice, and they'll be like, hey, so uh, when are you getting that Weller foolproof store pick? Yeah. Is that coming in anytime soon? Yeah. Don't be that guy no. or gal. Don't be that person. Yeah. You know, because guess what? If you're in some of these stores long enough, you'll see enough people go running it. It's just not people looking for Blanton's or Pappy or whatever. Yeah. Anything, I guess, Buffalo Trace alligator. Right. People will run in there asking for things all the time that, Let's be real. You and I both know their odds are they're not going to have. Right. So just just work on the relationship part. Understand you're not, and also you're not going to get everything because right. these stores have multiple mm. relationships. Yeah. So you might get one bottle here, and they might skip you for the next couple. Yeah. Happens to us all the time. Yep. Uh, the second thing on the list is uh, time. Like, yeah, you got to be willing to put some time into hunting, um, or even just availability uh being able to be let's say one of your friends calls you and says i just saw at liquor barn they had blanton's or eagle rare or whatever it happens to be so of course they, more buffalo trace stuff. yeah they did a weller drop or whatever um you know because that tends to be what gets dropped most of the time sure. so like you have to be willing to be like all right well i'm gonna drop whatever i'm doing and i'm mm -hmm. going uh like today uh zach here told me, hey, they have President's Choice down at Old Forester. Yeah, and I was like, well, I'm on my way. I'm on your. I'm at. I'm on my way to your house, and I got he, stuck in traffic. Literally, got stuck in standstill traffic on 65, and I was worried the whole time that I wasn't going to get it. And so I get yep. down there, I wait in line, and lo and behold, I got a President's Choice, uh, which I was super stoked about because it's the first time I've ever been able to get it. There's yep. been a couple times I've been down and missed it, yep. and so. Like, this was the time. I was mobile. I was ready to go. And I got lucky. So, yeah, it's the availability part. Like, 
obviously, you know, whenever COVID was going on and liquor stores were having drops or distilleries were having drops, there's a lot more people that were home yeah. that could get away. Yes. Well, now people are starting to trickle back to work. So now some of this, even though you still have some of it, you don't, I don't, I feel like some of that has went away a little mm. bit. Yeah. But now the enthusiasm for rare bourbon has went up as a whole. Yeah. So now there's just, it's a lot more competition. So yeah, you can't, you can't sit at home and think to yourself, well, it'll just come to me in time. And I like, honestly, I like what old Forrester did today. Like, they basically trying to trick all the hunters. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's kind of what yeah. they're doing. They, they didn't put it out they, first thing. They dropped a, a barrel strength rye this morning. Yeah. And then afternoon, what was it, about 1.30, uh, 2 o'clock maybe? 2, two o'clock. Yeah. They dropped President's Choice, just magically drop it. Yeah. Boom. And again, like if you if you were waiting to for some magic fairy to tell you that it was, that it was there, like... It wasn't gonna happen. You just it got we got lucky. Yeah, you get lucky, and but you got to be mobile and ready for that. So, yeah. yeah. So that's two. So yeah. I guess three would be networking. Now the difference whenever I'm saying networking and relationships, networking, in in my opinion, is whenever you're talking to your friends who hunt bourbon. Yeah. And let's be real, if if you are hunting bourbon for a long enough period of time, you have your little groups or your little cliques. It. it I don't want to say it's like as bad as high school where, you know, like, like, you know, you have the cool kids and the nerds and the athletes and and the really smart kids, whatever else. Like, I'm not saying it's anything like that, but you have a group of people and these groups of people just form and they figure out who knows what and they have this connection here and this connection there. And then they just form into these groups. Just important. And it's vitally important. Yes, it is so important. Like, for example, he wouldn't know about old Forster today if I wouldn't have told him. I found out from the guy from Old Forester because he literally walked in. He's a he's a friend of mine, friend of the channel, and he walked in and he's like, "They're setting this out right now." Like he was the first person to know, yeah. and he reached out to me and let me know, and I was able to reach out to him and let him know. Yeah. And that's happened through multiple times. He's told me stuff. Yeah. I've told him stuff. Networking. Try to have a group and of people who are similar to what sure. you want or yeah. you know hunt for and stuff like that. And also, with that, pull your own weight. Don't yeah. Don't, don't be dead weight in the group. Like, don't, don't always be the one receiving information. Yeah, try to find out something. And everybody goes through times where yep. it's like, oh, you know, I got kids' games going on. I got vacation. Work's crazy. Sure, that always happens. Yeah. Don't try to be carried by one dude in the group. Yeah. Or two dudes in the group or whatever. And yep. some groups are big. Some groups are, you know, 20 people. Some groups are just three, four, five. You know, just whatever you need. So, yeah. All right, fourth thing is you got to be willing to camp out and get in the lotteries of of the of these things. Uh, yeah. Camping out is is key. Maybe not camping out all night. There have been some <sighs> bourbons where people have camped out all night. Can we uh, please stop camping out all night? Yeah, camping out all night sucks. <laughs> but sometimes that's what's required. Like uh, we did the angel share, and we got we didn't camp out all night, but we were there at like four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, we got there super early. We were like number four or five in line. Mm -hmm. Uh, But from that day on, because it started so early on day one, the rest of the allocated Angel Share 117 series, it just kept getting earlier and earlier when people were showing up. And so people had to show up earlier. And uh, But you got to be willing to do that sometimes if you want a piece of the bourbon hunting pie. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, I, I don't mind waiting in line. I don't mind, you know, you get your chair, you have to bring your chair yeah. and you have to chill and, yeah. and hang out and everybody's pretty cool. You know, sometimes people are sharing, doing little, like little bottle shares. Yeah. You can, which is always good. It's, yeah. It's, it's always it's a great. good way to pass the time. You know, you network, you, ch- you try to figure out, it's like, oh, I always see you here, blah, blah, blah. What do you know? That kind of stuff's cool. Yeah. What sucks is, is whenever you get people from, there's this group from Ohio that comes in from out of town, and a lot of locals around here know this group. Yeah, and they'll sit out there and camp out like 24 hours before they open, and we're like, "Great, now we all got to go get our chairs." Yeah, and we, we all, all have to get out there and, there. and head out. And we're all kind of like, "All right, who's going to be the first one?" They kind of all trickle in, and then, yeah, yeah, that those kind of get old quick. Um, but the other thing too with the camping out and the lotteries, so you know, not just like the lotteries of you showing up to the store, they give you a ticket and they draw like. Also, the online lotteries. Yes. Like, don't be wrong. Those aren't much better <laughs> no. in a lot of ways. Listen, Total Wine, <laughs> I love you, but I hate you because I've never sniffed 
any of the allocated summer, spring, fall, winter. Like it don't even matter. Yeah, they see my name and it just like gets skipped over. Yeah, I've I've won once, and out of every lottery I've ever done, and I get that's one more than a lot of people. But you'll never win if you don't get in the lottery. Yeah, in some places though, like. Like the Ohio lottery, for example, yeah. like because all their stuff's done through the state allocation. Like, you actually, yes, there's a lot of people that enter, but there's a lot of stuff in that lottery. Yeah, like a crap ton of stuff in that lottery. So being out of state and being able to register for that stuff, constantly going, like I know people here in Ohio, they don't win every year, but they dang near win every other year, yeah. and they get a decent bottle every year from yeah. it. So just it's a little bit of work you have to do, but just do it. And yeah. yes, I get it. Most of us don't win obviously but some of us do some of us do yeah it seems like the same people win every time the same people who have like 64 email accounts in the lottery like we all know those people yeah but you know that is just what it is it is what it is it's so, part of the it's part of the hunting game yeah all right so you want to talk about the last one the yeah. worst one yeah go ahead all right so the, the worst the the last tip that you need to know is you got to learn how to take an L you got to know that whenever you're doing all of this bourbon hunting you're going to lose. And honestly, you'll probably lose a lot more than what you'll win. Yes. Uh, just talking about some a rare bottle that's been out here recently that we've all been looking for, Russell Russell's Reserve 13-year. Yep. I've literally been in line at multiple stores as they open, like waiting there, and there's a couple people in front of me. Today, there was one that I just missed by one. They put out six. I was seven. Yeah. So it, it's just you're constantly – having to fight that. Now you'll go on streaks where you're constantly winning yeah. and then you'll go on streaks where you're constantly losing. And I've seen a lot of people who lose and they're like, screw this. This isn't for yeah. me. I'm not doing this. And that's fine. Cause that just means there's more opportunity for me. Like, uh, one, one morning we went to E town for a lottery release Oh yeah. and we got our tickets. We're standing in there and person after person, after person, after person, after person, after person kept getting bottles of bourbon and we just never got anything what was crazy was it was like six people that were in front of us all won yeah and like, we couldn't we couldn't and they won like a stag uh, like a georgie stag yeah. they won our old rip i'd have taken an eagle rare at that point i think they also won one of those weller foolproof short yeah, picks i think they did so, so it was just yeah. crazy and then the other day we were down at evergreen nulu mm. and um, I met him down there. He was like number six, I was and fifth, fifth in line. I was eighth in line. Yeah. And they go through. There was two Russell Reserve Thirteens and missed yeah. two Weller Foolproofs missed store picks, store picks, yeah. both, uh, and then some Eagle Rare store picks. Gets through, gets through, gets through. He gets an Eagle Rare store pick. I get the big fat nothing because the last guy and the guy in front of me got the last eagle rare store pick yeah and i was left with nothing and my only consolation prize was spending 45 dollars on a pour of king of kentucky <laughs> and uh eh taylor uh barrel proof which now it was a good consolation prize which honestly that was better than than the it would have been store pick, right? yeah okay. it had been better than the 35 dollars i sent i would have spent on the <laughs> store pick honestly <laughs> But, so yeah. you, but you got to be willing to do that. You got to yeah. be willing to walk, walk and and spend the time to be in a place, and know that there's potential that you yeah. ain't getting anything. Yep. Yeah. That's why it's called hunting and not yeah. getting. Yeah. So, so true. Just reality of it. Yeah. But so those are kind of our hunting tips for yeah. you. Uh, you may have your own hunting tips. You may have some secret honey holes that you 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 work through and stuff like that. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but. Honestly, the the fun of all of this is the hunting. You know, oh, yeah. you you never feel fulfilled after getting a good bottle. Like you get it, and then you're like, man, what do I want to get next? It's always something next. It's the adrenaline. Of yeah, it, it is yeah. the adrenaline. Of I it. agree. So uh, those are our hunting tips, and uh, you know, it, they are what they are. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, if you all have any other better tips that we should talk about, or you know, look at doing or whatever else. We talked about doing uh, like a hunting for like if you're in the state of Kentucky. Yeah. You know, between the distilleries or good places, yeah. good stores to go to. So we'll probably do that for a future video. But yeah, this is just more of a general overview of everything. What we think, wherever you're at in the country. This, these, these are good things to do. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. So. so, but anyways, I think it's time in the video where we say, uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. 
where we'll try to give you more fun videos like this, hit that little like button in the corner. And again, comment. Tell us if we missed any of our any of these big tips, or if you have a tip to add, or whatever else. Yeah. So. Uh, and actually, it's still an opportunity because this video will be out, but there's still an opportunity to go look at our last video, oh. comment, like on it, yeah. uh, because you'll have a chance to win the uh, Weller Antique store pick. Store pick. Non chill filtered. Non chill filtered. <laughs> uh, you get the opportunity to yeah. maybe win that. Uh, you're gonna, you'd be enter into the drawing for uh, that for being in our top hundred uh, subscribers. Yeah. So take that opportunity to do that. So uh, until next time, we'll see you.